Hello, Biotube. Art mediums are kind of important. Bionicle is an art form that I feel has very much been maligned by its own fan base, for whatever reason. People hate on the Toamata all day and all night because of the lack of articulation, not realizing the sculpt work is amazing on these figures. I'm not sure where this obsession with articulation came from, really. Uh, me, personally, I just want the figures to look good. If they can move, that's more of a bonus than a requirement. And these figures looked amazing. Very straightforward, great mechanical detailing. It was what it was, and we liked that. Late in Bionicle was run, things started to wind down and run down. The joints became more brittle, the designs became more simplified, but the essence of the line was still there. You still had the articulation, you still had the mechanical elements. Of course, they weren't real anymore, there was no gear functions anymore, but everything looked apart well enough. It was still the same format, it was just evolved. Then, the successor to the Bionicle format, the Character and Creature Building System, aka the Hero Factory System, was introduced, which made everything like an iPhone. Mechanical detailing was sparse. It's kind of neat, it's more Transformer-esque, Super Robot-esque, but it's also very simple, and therefore very boring. I don't hate CCBS, but there's only one character that I decided to keep from the entire Hero Factory collection, and that's this one, Natalie Breeze. It's not because of the CCBS that I like this set. The CCBS really does help the look of Natalie Breeze, but it's really that part from the original format. Her mask that sells it, and I feel it's really the best Glatorian helmet that we've ever gotten. Do I like Hero Factory more than Bionicle? Did I see CCBS as this great upgrade over Bionicle? No. I can definitely understand and appreciate CCBS, but Bionicle is just better. Even though a CCBS set being Breakout Natalie Breeze in front of you is my favorite Lego set. And it really caused some identity issues for Bionicle. Yes, Hero Factory is a spin-off of Bionicle, but we had been a few years in and Hero Factory had really established itself. And its aesthetic was really just not compatible with the concept of Bionicle. And you didn't really feel the mask hunt in the story because you just got the set and the mask came with it. You didn't have to go out and buy the mask. And you could say, oh, well, Tahu 2010 came with a mask. Yes, but you had to search for the golden armor in the store. So the nature of Bionicle Medium was very hands-on, very connective, and this really just dropped the ball. Then there's this delightful little fellow, who is very much a Tahu like all these other Tahus, in a very different format, but also using a lot of LEGO Technic to call back to that old format. It's a fun homage and little more than that. Some people were enraged by it, but I celebrated them like, yeah, man, we did it. We brought back Bionicle, and we did. And as a community, we should be happy about that. And I guess at this point, the definition was just Technic Robots, right? Not really the best definition, but at least it is a definition that works. It has some practical use. It's connected to a reality. Then this happened, and I was like, wow, this is terrible. I couldn't believe it was real. I could not. And this is really when Bionicle just became another LEGO brand. Because Tahu at this point is just your generic LEGO figure, having more in common with them than he did classic Bionicle. So the definition was no longer tied to anything physical, and I was pretty disappointed about that. And this was due to many factors economically, and of course fan demand. Fans wanted this change from Bionicle to the LEGO format. They said, we're tired of A-Falls, you know, making fun of Bionicle. So we want Bionicle to be a generic A-Fall brand. I made hundreds of videos of this topic. It's something I feel very passionate about. And people get pretty passionate in these discussions. And for those wondering why this is a problem, imagine instead of all the diversity of Optimus Primes that we've gotten recently, we had a long absence followed by... The Lego Icons version of Optimus Prime. Yeah, now do you see it? And hey, since Bionicle isn't a format anymore, and Bionicle has explored other formats in the past, why not do so again? License it out to Takara. I mean, they've had a building system since the 70s, and here you can see a horrendous example of something that you can build with it. This 5mm peg system was essential to Microman and Blockman, and is now just one aspect of Transformers. Honestly, though, if they made a Toy Rise Tahu, I would buy it immediately. The problem with them is very similar to this. It also was a format that actually meant something. It had a definition, and over time, like Bionicle, that definition slowly withered away. 
And Star Wars, of course, is a big part of why that is. George Lucas, in creating Star Wars, wanted to homage the old film serials. These were connected stories, kind of like TV shows before TV. And you can kind of guess why that description, why they went away. Yes, the war between TV and film was a rough one. It did lead to many innovations, such as widescreen, which I still haven't fully embraced, and 3D, but that comes in waves. While Lucas did homage the serials and put that back into the consciousness of people, it did not cause much change in the film industry itself. Rather... It was just a strange man being nostalgic about his childhood. Making a simple story about our relationships to each other and the transcendent. And doing so while fighting the studio system. Of course, though, other people would eventually get around to the idea of bringing back film serials. What if we could have feature films that all were interconnected as if they were like a TV show, all set in the same universe? While many people point to crossovers in the past and say, oh, look, this did it before the MCU, no. Those movies are not structured in the way the MCU is structured. And it really was the structure of the MCU that propelled so many of its lesser works into box office hits. So the system was built to handle some flaws in the movies, but it was also designed to build on each other and improve films over time. This really blurred the lines between film and television. And the rise of streaming around this time was also blurring the lines between the TV show and the web series. So there were all these interesting elements working together to kind of blur the lines between film, TV, and web series. And the MCU dabbled with this a bit, dipping their toes into Netflix. This, of course, gave Disney some insights into the streaming world, and whether or not it really was the future of entertainment. They came to the conclusion, of course, that it was really the future of entertainment, so they decided to build their own streaming service, Disney+. Plus. Much to the anger and disappointment of many people, as the fracturing of the streaming scene led to the reintroduction of some of the negative features of television. And then the pandemic happened, and everything was accelerated. Movies were being offered up in theaters and streaming concurrently. Some were just being dumped onto streaming. It was a catastrophe, but a good one in the eyes of Disney. Disney Plus was an instant hit, of course, and the pandemic also boosted its numbers. Very much everybody was hopping on this streaming bandwagon. And the absolute dominance of smart TVs in the 2020s really helped move things along. But post-pandemic, would the box office return? It did, but people were also thinking, hey, why watch a movie that I'm just kind of interested in if I could just watch it a few months later? This was a massive change in consumer preference and not held by the Disney Plus Marvel shows at the time. Disney had been making more Marvel content than ever before, and that kind of posed a problem, especially when the TV shows were required watching for the films. The line between TV and films kind of died right there. Or it would have if the model actually worked, as films that depended on the television shows kind of crashed and burned. The Marvels doing exceptionally poor in the box office, being the lowest grossing MCU film, while films like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did pretty well. People were not into this idea that they had to pay for a streaming service to understand the films they were paying to watch. Instead of being an asset, this became a big liability, and eventually Disney backtracked, which is quite a rare thing for Disney to do. But I think the damage to the MCU is done. And I don't think film as a whole is out of the woods either. Marvel has done a lot to legitimize the home theater, and so have other companies. Leading us to ask the question, what is the difference between film, web series, and television? And the lines get more and more blurred every day. In the end, it's all video, isn't it? Imagine being. Hope you liked it. Links below.